Hey everybody and welcome to part six of core fundamentals of web development. In this video, we're gonna work on adding functionality to our submit button. We're gonna take a look at ES6 fat arrow functions and we're gonna talk about the difference in how the keyword this is used inside of it. And we're gonna talk about the difference between fat arrow functions and regular functions. All right, so I'm back in our project right where we right where we stopped in our previous video and we're going to continue here uh, working on our submit button so the first thing we want to do is get a reference to our submit button so we're going to do const submit button all right so we got that reference and now we want to come in and add our uh, click handler so that's what the event is going to be here the event listener is going to be a click event so we'll come in and do submit button dot add event listener and click will be uh, the event and then we're going to start off by just passing a traditional uh, callback function what we've seen before and probably what you guys are are used to and then inside of here let's just console log uh, submit press just to make sure this is connected okay so let's save this let's come into our form click submit and it says submit press really quickly if you guys focus here see it submits but then it, it it changes the URL here so it reloads the page and that's the default action uh, when we do a submit button on a form so what we want to do something we've done before is go ahead and accept our event parameter and then we want to stop form from re from submitting basically so we want to event dot prevent default so again anytime you want to prevent the default action on an event prevent default obviously is uh, is the function you want to call so let's save this and then we'll reload our page and click submit and we should just see submit pressed and then we click it and we get it however however many number of times we clicked perfect so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the this keyword and let's just start by console logging this and this is getting into some of the much more intermediate and could be advanced topics of web development so let's just start here and we'll see what this is and let's actually console log this outside of the function too. So it should print this as we start and then when we click submit we'll see it, it uh, we console log this again and notice that they're two different things. So first this one over here what this is what this key what the this keyword is referring to is the window object so it's basically the global object so you can see here this is this is our window object printed over here and if we look at it it's got all sorts of different properties so if we were to come over here and add let's say this dot array equals array and save that and reload we can come in and see we've got our array variable right here so the window object is what we're looking at and you can add things to the window object you can add variables and functions and all sorts of stuff just like any other object but if you notice when we come into our event handler when we console log this inside of the event handler it actually spits out the submit button which is the the element that triggered this event so with traditional callback functions the way we're looking at them right now uh, the this keyword uh, JavaScript binds it to whatever the element is that gets clicked or key down or whatever the event is so this is going to be a big difference from fat arrow functions so first of all let's just take a look at the syntax here and before we actually implement the fat arrow function let's first talk a little bit about the scenarios when the this keyword can change so by default everything let's just see let's let's console log this inside of display link categories do that all right and to call that we need to type in a object and we should see here we got the window object so inside of our regular function the this keyword is pointing to the root object as well so another way that the this keyword gets updated is inside of an object literal so let's say we've got a const object and it's got a function here called get nums whatever it is can be random uh, and it's going to be a function 
And then inside of this, I'm gonna console log the this keyword. All right, so we've got that. And now let's let's do a console, or actually let's just call, so object.getNums, let's call it, and let's see what this is inside of this object. So we see getNums is the function that gets called, it logs the keyword this, and then this actually refers to the object the parent object, the object literal. So if I added a property here for name, these are not great examples, but so here's James Quick, and I save this and I reload it and type it properly. Notice that the it gets the entire object. So there's it's got the name property and the get names function. So the this keyword inside of an object literal is going to point to or refer to the actual object that it's inside of. Now another way that this can change is by doing um, now another way this can change is inside of function constructors so if you've heard of object-oriented programming with JavaScript uh, you can basically create constructors that can be reused to generate objects for you so let's take a look at a, a person object or a person constructor and it's just a function and it can take in let's say uh, first name and last name and I can assign this dot first name equals first name and this dot last name equals last name and then let's console log this so to call to to call a person constructor we want to do a const person equals new and then uppercase person to call that constructor passing in the two parameters so first name and last name and inside of there, when this happens, it should console log this. So let's run that again, and we should see now that inside of the person object, this refers to the actual person object that's created. All right, and actually, this is a person function, a person constructor function inside of there that this keyword refers to the actual object itself. So those are a couple of different ways that the uh, this keyword can change. Now there's there's ways to manually change what this keyword points to by using call bind or call apply and bind and I'll leave that up to you guys we're not going to get into that right now um, I'll leave that as something that you guys can look more into and as always I've got a couple resources here uh, this is from Todd Moto understanding the this keyword and he walks through the different scenarios when it can change uh, window object slash global scope object literals we looked at prototypes and constructors we just looked at that and then the changing the this contact using the call, apply, and bind. So if you guys are interested in looking at that, I would take a look at his article. And also another article that we have here is from SitePoint. So SitePoint has always been one of my favorite resources. Um, and this is taking a look at arrow functions. And it defines them as, let's see, more concise syntax for writing function expressions. So let's start there. And let's come in and I'll show you what an arrow function looks like. So if we want to pass in the event parameter, all we have to do to call, to make this be a function is just the fat arrow, the equals and the, the right angle bracket. So after we've added this syntax, now this function is a fat arrow function. And if you remember previously, the this keyword inside of this function referred to the submit button. So add event handler in JavaScript, it did some magic behind the scenes to uh, manually set the this keyword to refer to the submit button. Now, with fat arrow functions, that's not gonna be the case. Let's see now, we type and then we press submit, and now window object is what it refers to. So this makes sense to what we would expect with those couple of rules that we've talked about, where the window object will only change inside of an object literal, which this is not, or a constructor function, which this is not, um, or you manually are setting it, which we are not. So previously, JavaScript would manually set it with the uh, callback function defined the way we had it. Now with the arrow function, we get just the, this keyword that refers to the global object or whatever the uh, encompassing this keyword was. So this is a little bit different. Now, one of the reasons why you might wanna go back to a regular callback function is if you need to access your element in here, so let's say instead of uh, having a variable for submit button, you just did a document. So right here, document, query, selector, and then 
selected it this way. Now it might be a little more inconvenient to come in here and type that again if you need to do something with this submit button. So having this with a regular callback function would be a quick and easy way to do that. But since we've got this assigned to a variable, it doesn't take much for us to reference it. We can reference it directly as submit button if we wanted to do something else with that. So uh, a couple of other things that we can know if we're taking in just one parameter, we don't actually have to uh, pass in the parentheses, which is actually pretty cool. We can just do that. If we are doing multiple, we can come in here and do uh, second and third and close that off just like we would with, um, with a regular function. The fat arrow still is the same. And there's lots more to get into with this. Basically, it's a new way to do concise syntax in ES6. It's very useful for the new array functions. So array functions like map and reduce and filter, these arrow functions become really powerful um, and they're really, really concise for those. So if you're interested, take a look at that and I might do a follow-up video if you guys are interested as kind of a bonus video here on what those functions are and how they work and how to use the arrow functions with them to make them really, really clean. All right, so all of that said, I feel like there was a lot to kind of go through there. All that said, we want to come into our submit button event handler, and we want to get a reference to the different values of the form. So I'll do title and then categories. So we've got all three of our properties of a link here, and then now we can create a new link object. And this would be title is the key and then title is the value. And I've always had this problem before where this seems super, super repetitive. I have to type title twice when it's the exact same thing. Well, ES6 syntax, I can just type this in once and it assumes that the key is title and the value is the title variable as well. So same thing with URL and then same thing with categories. So let's console log this object, new link, just to make sure it looks the way we expect. So let's type in understanding the this keyword URL is let's grab that and then categories it'll be JavaScript uh, this keyword something like that all right let's do a submit and open this up and we should see our title here understanding this keyword categories is an array with two items and then URL is the URL to the article so that's exactly what we want now, the next thing we need to do is take this object and add it to an array of links, so push it onto an array, and then clear out our form. So first we need to get a, let's see, get an array up here, so let's do let links equals array, and then we'll come down and push new link to array. All right, so this will be links.push, and then we're gonna push on our new object, uh, new link, not object and get rid of that console log statement before that. And I'm gonna put this uh, prevent default up at the top. All right, so we're pushing on our new link to the array. Now we wanna come in and empty out our forms. All right, so this should basically go out, go in and empty out all the information that the user had added. Now the last thing we need to do is make a call to display link categories because once we've emptied out this link categories array, we don't want, let's see here, we don't want these categories after we type them in to persist here. So we wanna actually get rid of those. So let's save this. Let's say understanding this, I don't know if, nope, don't have the URL still copied. Let's grab it, paste it in, be JavaScript, if I can type. And then submit, we'll empty this out, it will uh, call the display link categories function and if we try to print out our links we should see that the links array has one object in it which is the object that we just created so this is exactly what we want we've got our functionality to submit and we simulate that by just adding it to an array so we're not going off and saving it to a database or anything we're just adding it to our array and then we've got the ability to clear out our form so it looks like something actually happened and so the next thing that we need to do is actually display our links after we add them. So that's going to do it for this video.
and I will get ready to see you guys in the next one.